Today we went to um, a place where I spent six years of my life as a child and probably the most concentrated part of my childhood that I, that I can remember. Yeah. What, when was the last time you'd been there? Mm. Hans and I drove by a really long time ago and the house was actually still there when we drove by last time. So this yeah. condo, set of condos, is probably inside of the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. But I, I think it's been like 20, 20 years or so since I drove down Grant Avenue, might be. I, I can't even remember, honestly. I don't even remember how many kids I've had. I had the last time that I can't even remember. It's a long time ago, but I know that Hans was with me one time just driving by. So what was it like walking where you used to walk? Um, I think at first when I, as I'm walking, um, as we're pulling into 2417 Grant Avenue, which is so crazy that I remember that address, um, you know, the, the surroundings are different. Like last night I was looking on maps and Google Earth and trying to find it, right? And the number 2417 like came into my spirit. I'm like, I think that's it. And and I, so I went and like tried to find it through Google Maps and like, so it looks like a big white house and with a super long driveway, but I'm not sure as I'm looking here on Google Earth if this is like, is that it or not? And so then I, I scroll a little bit to the left and I get in front of this other um, older house and sure enough I get a clear line of sight directly to the apartment that has the same exact apartments, the same coloring, the same uh, garage doors, the same design on the garage door, like this diamond shaped thing that's on the garage door and I went, <laughs> that's it. Those, that, that, so where the white building was is where our property was. This house was literally, this is where our house was, right here. It's gone now? It's gone, yeah. So it was up against this, not this fence, but a fence that was right here. And yeah, this house was behind us. So we're literally like standing. We are literally standing, yeah. We are literally standing where the house side was. Yeah, like outside my bedroom window, which would have been right here. We looked into their house. Wow. Yeah. Totally. It's like initially it's like, okay, the old house is not there anymore. And so something new is here. You know what I mean? And so but right away, you know, I have the the flood of the memories of there was a retaining wall. It was it, to me it was huge because I'm a little kid, you know, so there's a big retaining wall and and um you know a, a big it was actually kind of like a, a parking lot, and then there was a grassy area, a huge tree, and that was our, our little yard for this little house. So I think initially it was, you know, as we drive through L.A., and honestly what spurred this whole thing is yesterday I went to go get some blood work done. I should have done it while I was in Texas, and there was a deadline to have it done, so then I, there, I'm like, oh, i got to do this in L.A., and... We start driving down Inglewood Avenue to go to this place to get, you know, blood work done. And I'm like, I feel my belly just starts churning like crazy. And everything looks so familiar. But I had never gone from, you know, here at the airport in from this direction to there, right? So right away, I'm like, my belly is just churning. And I'm looking at these houses. I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know where I'm at. Like. I've been here before, I've been here before, and you know, when you're a little kid and in the back of a station wagon that has a big burn mark on the hood, you, you know, you, I don't know that you're paying that much attention, you know what I mean? And so, but looking at these houses, they're the same, the same, the same, the same. And so when we came up to Grant Avenue and seeing, there's been quite a few houses that have been torn down and replaced and old apartments, but I'm shocked at how many of the same old apartments are there. So initially it's like, it's not the place, but I can feel uh, the emotions and I can feel the, 
the flood of the memories. Literally, my mom would send me on my bike or on foot to go to the grocery store for them. Really? As like a six-year-old. Wow. Yeah. A six-year-old? Riding on this busy street. Oh. To the store. To get munchies. Munchies. Mm. Yeah. The thing that is so surprising is how much fear. Yeah. How much fear. That I didn't realize I had as a kid. I think I, 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 I don't know why, but I really connected to that kind of fear that I don't think I've ever really thought about that, that there was a lot of tormenting fear. I honestly could not imagine letting my kid walk. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, my sisters and I, little, I'm five years old. I'm walking down and this busy street. You. They're younger than me. Walking down the street to this park. When we pulled, pulled up in the car, like I had the flash of the ambulance taking my mom in a stretcher. Um, because my, what I thought was my dad beating her to a bloody pulp. Not once, but many times. So, you know, so I had that kind of flood of memories and then, you know, now we're walking down Grant Avenue to go to the park and uh, seeing the same apartment buildings and feeling the fear. Same apartments, same house. And I'm, you know, I'm five foot eight, I'm a big girl, I'm not a little tiny thing, so, you know, trying to, seeing it as a big tall woman versus a five year old walking on that incredibly busy street and having my two little sisters with me crossing a busy street to get to the park. It's crazy to think that somebody would let their kids do that. So this was the park that you guys would go to? Mm -hmm. I mean, I seriously could not ever, I can't imagine letting my eight-year-old or a 10-year-old, like, just watch the park by themselves. It was a neat memory today at the park. I mean, there's some terrible memories at the park, you know, like playing on a construction site. You're a little kid. You don't know, right? So they were building that baseball, those baseball, I don't know what you call those, whatever those fences are, mm -hmm. the dugouts. This was all being built. And there was just a pole here. jumped on the pole and started to twirl and hit my head right there. Cracked my head open, 14 stitches. I had school for a month. So. Oh Major my concussion. gosh. You know, because, you know, kids play, right? And they only have their parents with them, you know? Gosh, how old was I? I think I might have been seven, seven or eight, maybe? Yeah, seven or eight. And just hit my head right on the... Right there. Mm -hmm. Blood everywhere. Blood yes. everywhere. In fact, I had super long Latin hair, and all of it had to be cut off because there was oh. a huge bloody knot, like the size of a baseball, yeah. in my head. Just a huge knot. You know, there's some crazy memories there that were not good. So there's this man that used to come here. Um, and he used to like run, right? So like run in this park. And he came and he sat on one of these benches while I was here, you know, and there's just kids everywhere. And he was wearing like these blue running shorts, super short running shorts, and literally exposed himself and just sat there with his leg totally open on the bench and just totally exposed himself right over there. And I remember grabbing my sister saying, we gotta go. 
I think about how many times I could have been abducted is it's crazy or my sisters or it's crazy to think about that I mean all these buildings are the same it was really interesting to me to to like step on the basketball court and I didn't realize and then all of a sudden I had the flash of my very first basketball practice there and being so excited. This is where I first learned to play basketball. I was six years old. Not wild. This is like yeah. Pigtails on the top of my head hanging down to my <laughs> backside, you know. Um little dark kid oh uh, with big space in between my teeth. I'm six years old, not even old enough to play in the league. Double dribble, <laughs> running with the ball, <laughs> traveling, <laughs> breaking all the rules. Granny shots, granny shots. <laughs> like totally not knowing what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, what a trip. Yeah, right here. Man, yeah. I literally just remembered that. What a trip. Oh, I wondered. Yeah, this is it. Wow. It's so cool. Isn't it? Yeah. Gosh. Oh my gosh, what a wild thing. I'm telling you, basketball, like, I think that saved my life. Yeah, it did. Eight million. The YMCA, you know what I mean? I don't even know how they knew where I lived or who my parents were or why they came knocking on the door one day. YMCA. Yeah. Yeah. The YMCA. This is crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Gave a kid a chance. And I don't know, you know, I've often thought about this, like how did the YMCA like come? I remember when they came to my parents' house and knocked on the door, like mm -hmm. how did they, how did they search us out like that? I don't understand. And I remember overhearing part of the conversation and them saying, you know, um, you know, we asked uh, if there was anybody that, uh, that the people at the park thought that, you know, somebody that they thought would want to play and I didn't, I didn't even know what basketball was like I had not even seen one before you know what I mean so I, I was clueless why they picked me I don't know I I kind of this sounds really stupid but I just almost feel as it, it was like angelic you know what I mean I do I feel like it was almost angelic I, I really wish I could know how that whole thing came about I, I wish I could like I, I wish I could see the movie of the behind the scenes of who said something to the, you know, coaches for YMCA to go oh, go down to this street at 2417 Grand Avenue. Like, how would they know where we were yeah. and knock on my parents' door and ask that question? And, and I remember them handing me the jersey, the jazz, number 14. So, yeah, that was... There's, that was probably, I feel like um, basketball was a huge, uh, it sounds so stupid and cliche, but lifesaver for me. That's how I feel. Like it was something to look forward to and I think there was encouragement there and I think there was life there. Wow. Yeah, pretty awesome. How fun. <laughs> How many um, scholarships were you offered? 26. 26, 26 scholarships. scholarships offers, yep. My junior year, if I completed with the same GPA and the same averages for scoring and rebounding. But full ride to Liberty University, which was an NCAA school. Yeah, I think it was a nice little escape from what was happening at home and probably a little bit of escape from fear. So even like when we walked back from the park back to the house or where the house used to be, you know, it hit me when I hit the apartments that were right next to where our house was. And I had to stop and sit down and gather myself. What are you thinking? Yeah. I don't 
I don't understand how people can neglect kids like that. I'm so sorry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, gosh, it'd be different if it was like, you know, I have a single mom who, who, you know, worked three jobs to provide, but that's not what the case was. We were like such a nuisance, you know? It's a crazy busy street. I think about like, I don't know, my grandkids. I would never let Riley walk down this street. She's almost 13. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, it's a crazy amount of neglect. I just don't. Yeah, I don't understand that. I just don't understand that at all. It was intense, the thoughts of neglect and the thoughts of my grandson walking himself to the park, Anthem, being around that age to walk himself to the park, or Harvey, who's six, Landon, who's seven, you know? Anthem, who's almost five, and looking at, these were the ages that me and my two sisters were. We were all 18 months apart. So when I think about the three of us walking down that crazy big busy street, you know, and I often wondered like, as an adult, would I think that street was still big? It is a busy street, right? Four lanes with a suicide lane yeah. in the middle. That is a busy street mm -hmm. with lights, you know what I mean? And yeah. so when I, when I look at crossing that street as a little kid that's so much responsibility mm -hmm. and fear you know what i mean like mm -hmm. walking by these big apartments and so when i came back to the to where the house site was and sitting on that retaining wall the apartments next door it was like just hit me like man just even like riding a bike you know what i mean that's crazy and I had two routes to the grocery store that street that we just came down could you imagine a six-year-old being sent to the grocery store because you have the munchies that's freaking crazy and sending with food stamps so I'd walk that way around that block or around that block the street that we came in on and sometimes send me to Vaughn's like that's a huge grocery store just send your little kid into a huge grocery store to and then you know take the paper bags right. and right like how do you hold that stuff I remember in fact it was from this direction I uh, sliced I scraped my leg as I'm riding a bike I s just tore the skin off my leg from you know carrying groceries back what am I seven years old like that just blows my mind like that's I don't know and I got some more forgiveness to do on that one because that's like like I said, it would be different if it's a single parent, you know what I mean? And they're working hard to just provide for you, but that is not what was going on. Sitting around watching TV, smoking weed. And, you know, your kids are playing. I was walking down here, I was thinking, gosh, I remember being so scared walking by these apartments, right? And people watching or men standing out and looking, you know, and me having to protect two little sisters when I'm just a little, little kid myself. You know, so I'm eight, Marty's four, and Rhonda's six. And we're, it's a crazy amount of pressure on a little kid. And, you know, like I said, there's that man that totally exposes himself at us. And I'm like, come on, we gotta get out of here. And I don't think I told my mom either what happened. It's crazy. And I think every day walking myself to school, even as a kindergartner, right. Anthem is almost five. Right. Oh my God. I could not imagine having Anthem walk himself Woo. on this street to school. You know, I realized I had been neglected, but th th this is crazy to walk down these streets, be at that park, to walk to school, you know, to walk that whole route. 
I, I think this is the first time I've ever connected to the fact that they had nothing else to do. I just did it. It's not the corporate parent who, you know, uh, chooses to work 80 hours a week. That's not, no, they were home. Where were my parents when we were at, at the park, at home? Where were we, where were they when we were walking ourselves to school back and forth, at home? Like, they, they had nothing to do. They were welfare recipients, they were drug addicts, and they chose, they chose to absolutely not be involved at all. It's really painful. And so when I hear other people say stuff like that, well, my parents worked a lot, I almost want to slap them, seriously. Because, yeah, I will agree, there are some parents, obviously, I've worked with thousands and thousands of people and lots of couples and, you know, I've seen so many people get healed and delivered of being a workaholic or whatever, drugs or you name it, whatever addictions they've had. And, you know, so sometimes parents can get super, like, fixated on wanting to provide a certain standard of living for their kids, and so they they make those kind of sacrifices. But still, but that's for the kid, do you know what I mean? That's for the future for the kid. That's for the maybe the kid gets to go to college someday. They get to be in a better neighborhood, a safer neighborhood. They get to be you know, have more opportunity offered to them. So I just, I hear people complain about that. I just want to smack them. Like, do you have any idea what it really is like to be, like, neglected fully? Like, not that your parents watch TV. Like, no, like, they just did not, they were not involved with your life. They didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't care. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you 